Hello. We are in the last unit for the week, and that is unit four. In this unit, we're going to be looking at learning activities, resources for online learning. Learning activities and resources for online learning. And when you go in online, what makes learning interactive? Make your content interactive are the learning activities that you put in there, the learning resources, how you interact with them. So right here, we're going to look at how you're going to select the best way to select your learning activities and learning resources. Now, what are the learning outcomes for this unit? By the end of this unit, you will be able to identify learning activities. Explain the importance of learning activities in an online learning context. Identify learning resources. Then explain the importance of learning resources in an online context. Now, what are learning resources? When we're talking about learning resources, what are they? Learning resources are those resources that will help the, both the learner and the teacher to succeed in the learning process, especially meeting with the stated learning outcomes. You need learning resources. You need your learning devices. When you have a stated learning outcome, you need to find out if you have the right resources that will help you achieve the stated learning outcome. And when they are not available, it gives you opportunity at the point of design to look out for them. And if you cannot reach and you cannot get, what do you do? You have to reverse your learning outcomes so that you will have the required infrastructure resources to match it up. So in this case, learning resources, starting with, it can be instructional videos. Instructional videos that have been prepared that will help to explain some concepts that will help to demonstrate and that will help also to present ideas. And you look out for how will I get these videos? The videos could be developed by the content developers, but sometimes the content developers may not have what it takes to develop such videos. Maybe there is no infrastructure that required for the development of the videos, and it wants to use an open educational resource video. So therefore, what does he do? He look at the learning outcome that have been set to look for that video. Because there would have been several videos with having the same uh, topic, but looking at the learning outcome you have sent, all those videos may not be able to meet the learning topic. So the learning outcome is what will direct the selection of that particular open educational resource video you want to use. Sometimes it may not be instructional video, you have to use test. Again, you look around, do I need to create this test from scratch? Or do I have an existing test that we can use that is a form of book? journal or again how do i find it and this is where oer comes in a test if i have to write how long will it take me you consider the cost because if you're writing from scratch you will spend some money how much will i spend what time will it take if i have an existing open educational resource how long will it take me to reverse the open educational resource, do I need to do some adaptation or do I have to use it the way it is, adopt it? Because if you are going to adapt, you are going to adapt the open educational resource in the area you set your learning outcome. Then we talk about tests and assessments. What resource do I have to carry out my test, to carry out the assessments? Again, there are times you have existing assessment, existing test in open educational resource format that you can pick and use. 
So if you are looking at learning resources, these are some of the learning resources, videos, books, and we could look at some infrastructure that could be required to execute the learning outcome, to meet up with the learning outcome. And this take us to the next, learning activities. What are the activities? Really from time to time, a lot of people find it difficult to identify what is activity. They say I should identify my activities in the process of course design. How do I know the activities? The activities are those things you want the learners to do while you are presenting learning to them. And to select the activities, you look at the learning outcome. What does the learning outcome say? And based on what the learning outcome says, you have to select an activity that will enable the learner to achieve that learning outcome. If the learning outcome is telling you identify, then you must look for the activities that will enable the learner to identify. That after the class, when it comes to application, the learner will be able to identify. So what are these activities? Some of these activities could be watch a video. It's an activity to watch a video. Remember the resources there because they are derived from the resource. The video you are telling them to watch, it means it's available. Watch the video and if possible, you would have provided some quiz to go with the video. Respond to the quiz. So if the one activity is to watch a video and answer some questions attached to the quiz. Then respond to a specific post in forum discussion. It's an activity. Make posts into a forum discussion. It's an activity. Reading. Reading what? You must specify what they need to read. You must bring out the content and let them know what they're going to read. Presentation of a given assignment. Maybe you've given out assignments and the activity is that they are going to present it, they're going to speak to the assignment during the live class. It's an activity. Then response to quiz like you have in this course, at the end of every week, you have to respond to quiz. So in the design, it is there where you need to respond to quiz. They're great co-learners. Yes, you may give an activity whereby learners have to grade themselves, examine themselves, and give feedback. Take a tour. It must be sure and be certain where you want them to talk. Participate in carrying out experiments and respond to feedbacks. These are some activities that learners can be engaged in. It could be more. But remember, it is the learning outcome that determines the type of activity that you're going to come up with. And the activity will direct be having impact on the resource that is available. In conclusion, to select adequate open educational resources require stated learning outcome, pedagogy, and the learning activities. This will guide what material to be sourced. For instance, where there is an existing quiz or experiment that can be used in an instance, such could be sourced through open educational resource. Now, before we end this section, in weeks one and two, we have done it to equip you and give you an insight into the course. The remaining two weeks, which is week three and four, we're going to focus on translating what we have learned in week one and two into practice. We're going to brainstorming. This is preparation towards what we're going to be doing in the assignment as from next week. You know, the assignment is part of what you'll be graded on to earn a certificate in this course. So for brainstorming, you're going to brainstorm on the following as you prepare to start your assignment practical. A, from among the courses you have been teaching, choose a topic. If you have not been teaching, 
choose any topic of your interest. Write to learning outcome for the topic. Identify the variables you will consider when designing the course towards looking for an open educational resources that will be used in achieving the stated learning outcomes. So, if you can get this out, it will help a great deal. And I wish you the best as you brainstorm. Thank you.